Hey, Danny. Yes, Trevor? You know how on our engine building videos we always have some chrome plated parts and then we've got some regular plastic colored molded parts that we have to paint like our engine block and that sort of thing. Yes? Well, what if I told you that there was an all chrome plated engine to build? Really? That sounds cool. What and where is that engine and why is it all chrome plated? Danny, do you remember how I told you that these AMT Trophy Series model kits came out around 1960, 61, 62, back in that time period? Yes? In those days, there was a lot of custom cars in the real world going out into the car show circuits, and they were competing for good prize money. To make their cars stand out, some of these customizers paid huge dollars to the chrome shop in order to have their entire engine chrome plated from top to bottom. So this would be the engine blocks, the cylinder heads, the intake and exhaust manifolds, the pulleys, the belts, the starter motors. Well, you can't chrome plate the belts, those are uh, rubber, right? But anyway, they did chrome plate pretty much everything they could get their hands on on their engine so that when they opened up the hood, it would just gleam right out and sparkle like you never saw before. That's awesome! Ooh. Yeah, it is pretty awesome, isn't it, Danny? So AMT wanted to get in on this chrome plating engine phenomenon that was going on in the show circuits, and they wanted to bring that awesomeness to you, the model builder, back in 1961. So they did that by offering this kit. Well, not exactly this kit. This is a later edition. But basically, the 1934 Ford pickup truck. And the custom engine in this was a 390 1961 Ford Thunderbird engine, which they plated from top to bottom, front to back, and up and down and sideways all over the place. So this model car kit, or model truck kit, comes with the complete chrome engine block. Ooh! So what do you have to do to build a chrome plated engine the right way? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Danny. I have an AMT 1934 Ford pickup truck model kit right here, which is second hand. So Danny, I need to ask you a question before we begin here with our chrome engine block. Danny, what do you need to do in order to get your chrome plated parts to stick together? Remember to scrape the paint and chrome off those contact surfaces of the plastic before you glue it together. That's right, Danny. You must always scrape off the chrome plated parts if you want them to stick together. But you want to know something that's really sad? Is that the person that originally built this model pickup truck, they didn't know about scraping the chrome. And as a result, something pretty bad happened and they tried to do something in order to correct it and made a situation which could have gone really bad, but luckily it didn't. So Danny, Let's go down to the bench and I'll take the engine out and I'll show you exactly what happened and how we can fix that so it doesn't happen again. So once again we are going to be looking at our Chilton's Auto Repair Manual covering the years 1954 to 1963. And like I said this engine is really a 1961 Ford Thunderbird 390. So if we uh, just flip open to that section we can see our Thunderbird engine sitting right down here. This again is part of the Ford FE family. And with the Thunderbird, what they did was they bored out the cylinder holes here and made the whole engine 390 cubic inch and made it a little more powerful than just the regular Ford FE and the Edsel uh, 400, E400 motor. So that's basically how the Thunderbird works. So I've already really covered this in a lot of detail. I'll leave a card up here on the uh, Ford FE engine, just so you can see how that one was built. But what we'll do next is we are gonna take a look at the instruction sheet for our 1934 Ford pickup truck and take a look at the optional 1961 Thunderbird 390 engine and see how AMT has conquered the uh, engine block design. 
Here we have AMT's take on the 390 Thunderbird engine. And as you can see, it is pretty straightforward. And keep in mind that everything in here is chrome plated. So we have our air cleaner top, which is chrome. There's a little C. Carburetors, chrome. Valve covers are chrome. The cylinder heads and the intake manifolds all one piece, that's chrome. Our two engine block halves, which are chrome. Our belts and generators, which are all chrome. Our exhaust headers, which are chrome. And our chrome oil pan. The oil pan again is turned around in reverse because I do believe it's easier on the old vintage frames to have the narrow end of the pan at the front and the bigger end of the pan toward the back instead of how it's supposed to go on the real car with the big part of the pan up front because, well, there's metal axles going through the front end so they'd have to drill a hole in here or some kind of U-shaped, you know, hole. <laughs> Uh, now the only the thing that's nice with a fully chrome plated engine is the only thing you really need to paint is the paper element which is around here on our air cleaner and a black pulley belt. You got to be careful going around here because you want to leave your generator and your other pulleys here all with the chrome. So really just a little black around there and a little white around there and then you are going to need one more color and that is silver paint. Because since all of this is chrome plated, you're going to end up with spots where you're going to have to scrape the chrome off um, to make seam lines and everything match up and the whole deal. Now, like I said, this is a second-hand model kit. This isn't a factory fresh one. But the theory and principle still apply. Now, I want to show you our chrome plated parts here and what happens if you don't know to scrape the chrome off your contact surfaces. These are the custom engine parts that came with the second-hand kit that were still in the box. And this, of course, is our chrome Thunderbird engine. And there are still a few parts on the parts tree, but basically we have our fan belt and pulleys, our intake manifold with the cylinder heads, the distributor, and the oil filler, the two engine blocks. We've got our air cleaner with the carburetors underneath here, our oil pan and the Y hose for our radiator, and then on the parts tree, we still have, luckily, the exhaust manifolds. And over here, we've got both of our valve covers. Now, the problem with this is whoever had this engine before did not understand that you need to scrape off the uh, chrome from your contact surfaces. So <laughs> this is basically what happened. So they... they Whenever they did this, they took their tester's glue and they pulled off the cap like this. And they had the two halves of the engine and they went with the glue in between. And then they took this and went under here and they stuck it all together. And I bet glue squashed out everywhere and all kinds of stuff like that. And they figured that they had a solid bond here. And of course, as you can see, it's easy to take this apart because nothing is holding it together other than a bit of glue and the chrome so you're not getting that plastic to plastic weld however look what did happen now the thing about the testers red glue over here is that it is a cement for plastic models so this has some chemical properties in it that are pretty hot for uh, bare plastic so that the cement will weld the plastic pieces together and the actual cement part of it fills some of the gaps in between. Now because this is a hot chemical it did try to melt the chrome as best as it could but it couldn't really do that because again it's trying to break through a layer of plating. So what it did do in this situation is that it burned it into the chrome plating and again underneath here we've got some burn and if you look under our cylinder head Danny look at how bad this is whoa that's a complete mess yeah it's almost like there's a, a 16th of an inch millimeter or whatever <laughs> not millimeter but 16th of an inch of like glue residue stuck underneath here and because this is so bad, when we try to put this on, you can see it, 
there's such a huge gap and this doesn't really want to seat properly at all. So what we're going to do, Danny, is we are going to take a number 16 hobby blade, which of course is the one with that angle. We're going to try to chip and pull this out of here so we can get back to the chrome that's underneath. And then we will scrape that chrome out of there. Hopefully I can do it. On our engine block, uh, we will remove the chrome along here. And then the other thing is, this chrome engine is not really aligned very nicely. You can see there's a big shift in here. Let's just clear this out of the way. All that needs the chrome scraped off on the contact surfaces. But see here, you can see it doesn't align properly. And I know it's hard to see with the chrome because of all the reflection. And here's another spot the two transmission halves. It's, it's like they're like this. You know, instead of being like that. They're, it's kind of like this and kind of like this. So that's what we're up against under there. So like my uncle used to say, if the pin offends thee, sound it off. <laughs> no, not really. But there, here's what we'll do. We will sand here. Now with the chrome parts, you really have to be careful with what you want to sand where the contact surfaces are and what you don't want to sand. And another thing I noticed with these is, let's say that I sand it all under here, right? Uh, made this completely the white plastic underneath, and then I glue it on, which is not a problem. But the thing with the chrome is, it's like a little mirror, so it is going to reflect everywhere. So if there's a little bit of like white plastic showing up here and it overhangs a little, it will reflect down on the rest of the engine. So that's where you need your silver paint. You paint, you glue it all together, and then you take your silver carefully with your brush and you paint around the bottom here. So then when it does reflect, it's reflecting more silver, so it will look correct. Whereas, like, Lindbergh had this model as well, and they molded it in yellow plastic. So I have built a second one of these engines, and... Before I painted the silver underneath, you could see it was all reflected yellow down in here. Just like a mirror. Sort of like if you take the sanding block and you put it up in there. See how yellow that is reflecting? Now that would be your plastic that you scraped off. So you got to remember on these chrome ones, if you scrape it off, paint it back on with silver. Okay, so we sanded this edge. Now we got those pins, so we will carefully sand them off. Now I'm probably going to have to off-camera sand this a little better because I can only see so far with the way this is all set up. But at any rate, okay, here we go. Okay, remember to cross sand as well so that we get a nice flat surface here to glue to our flat surface over here, which needs a little more sanding, but anyway. Okay, now we have the flexibility to move this forward and back, up and down, the way we see fit, and the way that, of course, is going to give us the best, um, you know, alignment, <laughs> so that this goes together really nicely. Okay, and then, again, like scraping all the contact surfaces, cleaning all this up, and I've got the extra job of trying to dig all the glue out of here. But we can get this all glued together. Now, the nice thing is we don't need to paint the starter motor because that would be chrome-plated. We don't really have to paint anything, like I said, except for the belts. So you want to take a little bit of care going around here, making sure there's no uh, you know, parts attaching, pins sticking out. There's one right here and clean all this up and then you can paint it with the black and glue it to the front on these little pins that are here all kinds of cool stuff so what I will do is clean this all up and then we'll just take a look at it here's our engine block glued together and again, you can see that burn in there. But I also uh, cleaned it up so that the alignment was perfect, as best as I could get it. However, in the front, you can still see 
it's a little bit uh, shifted here. So in order to correct that, so our belts and pulleys will fit nice, just going to take the uh, number 16 hobby blade, holding it this way to the engine, and what I'll do is just push a little too late till I get to the other little pin down here just to sort of flatten this out in here and to get that nice and then I'm going to test it with our belts and pulleys just to make sure that the belts and pulleys are going to sit flat and not be at a weird angle and I think I think we pretty much have it here um, again could do a little bit more what I'll do is just scrape a little bit around here and there just so I'm not scraping too much into the chrome for touch-up later on and then I will scrape a little bit around here just so that again we get our glue our plastic our glue our plastic to plastic is what I'm trying to say and get it in there and then like I said around the belts here we'll paint a little bit of that gloss or flat black just around the belts to make it nice and now we still have this glue burn and seating problem I did clean it up as best I could underneath on our manifold I also scraped away where our whoops our valve covers are going to glue down and I had to rework this a little bit so that our carburetors will sit nice and flat on that manifold manifold sort of like a little staircase as you can see going down um, so again this is ready to go now for here I've got our file and I'll just file in between again trying to get both ends of the block to match together and we'll do that in there and there now I, I can get away with just with just scraping off the chrome on the top here I don't think I need to get down into where the cylinder heads connect on the angles there 45 degree angles I think I might be okay just to have it all happening up in the valley here underneath our intake manifold and I think that should be good so what I'll do is I'll oh and then scraping here um, I'm gonna scrape inside the oil pan there and up toward the front and try to catch these little uh, well little bumps here <laughs> I guess because I in the past I have one of these and I scraped off the chrome on the top of the pan and then as you can see when you glue it together you get a little overhang and all the color of the plastic was reflecting up onto the 45 degree angle under our cylinder heads so this time around I'm just going to scrape off the bumps and try to get the glue contact happening on the bumps see what happens here we have our chrome pieces with the chrome scraped away on our contact surfaces I did decide to go down on the angles there just so that all of this can connect and glue underneath I know it's pretty rough but if I maneuver it into shape you can see it gluing there and there or fitting nicely there and there anyway there we will need to add a little silver just inside here once this is glued together because you can see a bit of that uh, scraped away white plastic reflecting uh, one thing I did on the oil pan is scrape there and there and on the insides just so this all matches up and our belts in the front as well so one thing I'm going to need to do is put a little silver paint right in here just before I glue on the oil pan here's our chrome engine as we're progressing along and now I've glued the uh, intake manifold and cylinder heads and our carburetors and our air cleaner all together and again I still have to glue on our front um, pulleys uh, one thing I do notice about these uh, chrome kits if you happen to have sink marks in your valve covers not that one but I guess this one there's some pretty bad sink marks in here and there really isn't any way to fix these because if you do of course you lose your chrome uh, another one there so there's really two ways to go about that one is just to you know leave the sink marks in 
Uh, the other one is to strip the chrome off with like maybe easy off oven cleaner or something like that. Simple green. I know some guys use that and they, other people use purple stuff. Some people use brake fluid. I, I'm not too hot on that one. <laughs> In case it melts the plastic. You'll have to test a sprue, something that's not important before you throw your good parts into uh, any brake clean. Um, still need to sand off the mold marks under here just to get it to sit flat. But, you know, we're basically stuck with sink marks, so um, sort of the downside of chrome. I have seen people completely strip the chrome off these blocks, engine blocks and whatnot just so that they can get the actual, you know, original color on there so that it'll hide all the sink marks. Or, pardon me, they fill in the sink marks and then paint the original colors just to clean it up. But as you can see, we want a solid chrome engine, so we're going to have to deal with our sink marks, unfortunately. It's just the way it goes. So again, once we glue this on, we'll have to paint around where we see any white plastic with our silver just to hide it and to make this thing fully look like it's chrome. And here's our solid chrome Thunderbird motor. As you can see, it does look really nice after everything's all said and done. Got a little bit of white paint under the air cleaner here for that paper filter, and our black paint here for on our belt. And that's pretty much the only thing other than silver chrome touch-up that we've done to this engine. Basically, that's how you build a solid chrome motor. So now we'll just take a few pictures of this thing and I'll show you what those look like. And then after that, we'll wrap up the video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Tips and Techs, where I got to show you how to build a chrome-plated engine. In fact, our 1961 Ford Thunderbird 390 cubic inch engine. Oh, here comes Danny the dog, and he's wearing his sunglasses. So, Danny, what did you think of that video? Yeah, what? Oh, you thought it was pretty cool, eh? And that's why you're wearing your sunglasses? Ah, okay. Well, they're starting to fall off here. There you go. Oh, you're welcome. All right, Danny, so what do you think for next week? Should we show him another engine build? Okay. What engine should we show him? Oh, that would be a good one. But you know, Danny, I think we're starting to run out of engines, basically because there's only so many made. And then I am missing two model kits that haven't been in production for a very long time. One of them has a Chevy small block in it, and the other one has a Chrysler Hemi in there. But <laughs> I haven't seen those in a very long time. So hopefully they can come out again, Danny. But uh, in the meantime, there are still a couple engines left so we can build them. And then we can test them in the model car frames. Won't that be cool? Yeah. All right, so uh, your glasses are falling off again there, Danny. So do you have anything else you want to say? Okay, so you're going to uh, go away for now? Okay, okay, bye-bye, Danny. All right, so again, from me and Danny the dog, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address 
www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it. We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.